Hi, hi everyone, my name is Colette Rodriguez. Welcome to Colette's Temporary Thermic Kitchen. Tonight I am going to be making some gnocchi, something I love in my household. Um, that beautiful um, little pillows of air made with potatoes or sweet potatoes or pumpkins. And um, there's some great recipes on Thermomix, so I'm going to try one of those tonight. Um, it's something I make a lot and it's just yummy, so let's get going. So the recipe I have chosen is an, um, an American one. So it's on the USA site. So I'm just going to go to my week. And you can see all the other yummy stuff that I've been making this week. The steamed orange puddings are totally amazing. As is that coconut and spinach dal. That's a great midweek, real quick, gorgeous vegetarian dish. Okay, so sweet potato gnocchi. This is the one that I'm making tonight. And um, I'm basically going to get going. No, I'm not. I'm going to go back actually because I've already started. So what I've actually done already, I'm going to, sorry Andrew, if you can just come back on the screen. I've done the first four steps and I'll talk to you about those in a minute. So I'm going to head into step five, um, which is that step there. All right. So what I've actually done already is I have just following cookie do it tells us what to do we know it's amazing is i have already pre-cooked um, my sweet potato cut them into small pieces and you never really want to be boiling potatoes when you're making gnocchi because moisture is the enemy you want to keep it nice and dry now when this was actually finished its steaming time what i did is i actually tipped these onto some ba uh, paper towel wiped that with paper towel and then put them back on there. I don't want any excess moisture getting into these sweet potatoes at all. So it's telling me now to put those cooled potatoes, they've been sitting there for about 15 minutes. So nice cold potatoes are going in. When I used to do this um, manually in the old days, pre-thermomix, you would um, be putting those through a ricer to get them really nice and smooth. Um, but Thermo does all of that mixing up for us. So the lid's going on and it's just going to mix those together now and round we go to speed speed. Now it's really important that those potatoes are mixed really well so we're going to go again so all I need to do, you can see here we've got a really good, but there are a couple of little chunks in there. So we're going to push all this down. Oh, it smells good already. And can you see how dry that is? Because that little extra step of using that kitchen paper to get rid of that excess moisture is a good step. All right, so we go next. Thermi tells us the lid's gone on, thank you. And the next step is we basically just repeat that, but we're going at a, a, a small... Mm. So that should be nice and smooth for us. Beautiful. Now can you see how that texture has changed, how it is very, now very smooth? That's exactly what we want. Now you can change sweet potato to potato and pumpkin, but if you're using pumpkin, do let it drain off because it has so much more moisture in it. Um, I will often do half um, white potatoes, half sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, my favorite. All right, so that's now done, and we are now going to add into this some plain flour, all-purpose flour in the USA is plain flour, and it wants 11 ounces, but I'm not going to put 11 ounces in because I'd rather put a bit more in at the end. So I'm going to put like maybe three quarters of this in. So just guesstimating about three quarters. And we are going to add in some Parmesan cheese. The first part of this recipe is grating the parmesan cheese and we all know why we don't want to buy grated cheese because of all the additives but the caking agency is the biggie and by actually grating your own you're saving money and 
you don't have all those caking agents, which are basically things like silicon and cardboard. Did you know that, Andrew? Yeah, she's told me so many times. I'm sorry, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, and then also, this recipe's got some ricotta, and I have to say, um, this was a beautiful batch of ricotta I made in the Thermomix. It makes the most amazing ricotta, and I keep eating this. I think I need to make some cannelloni really quickly, because oh, it just is amazing. So in goes the ricotta. And next, large egg. So in goes our large egg. Okay, and then next, uh, a splash of salt for flavouring. And a bit of garlic powder, which is pretty yum. Nutmeg. Um, I'm not a big fan of nutmeg myself, so I choose to leave it out, but of course you can put it in. But you know, everything in my life has to have a bit of white pepper. So the white pepper is going in for extra flavor. And then the lid's going on. Isn't it great? And it's so easy to cook with a Thermomix. It tells us exactly what to do step by step. And now this is going to mix this for five minutes. That's um, speed three. Five seconds. Oh, five seconds. That's right. Thank you, honey. Okay, and now what we're going to do, we're going to leave the measuring cup on and we're going to bring up that dough function. So I remember the olden days with the, with the old mixer I used to have, it, then I'd have to change the blades and it would be so messy. Thermomix just does it all, seamlessly, love that. Okay, so the dough function has come up and that's just going to knead that now together for 20 seconds. Say hi to Karen, Kayleen, Pam, Vicky, Meryl. Lots of people on. That's lovely. Thank you guys for hopping on. I hope you are trying all of these recipes at home and that you're getting really inspired. Um, okay, now look, if you have a TM6, this is one of the great features is that connectivity. So on the TM6, we all know it's got a bigger screen, but it's got these videos that will show you technique. So it's, it's now telling us to basically transfer the, ball, uh, the, the dough to a mat, but if I press this, it's going to show me exactly what I need to do. A bit more flour, knead it together into a ball. How cool is that? Super, super clear. All right, so I'm going to do that step. Thank you. And I am glad I didn't add all of that flour in. So please remember that little tip, guys. So there we go. So I'm going to just tip this oh, out onto the bench. Wow. Well, oh, it's so healthy. And, and the garlic powder and the ricotta just add so much more flavor to these little knocky bites. Beautiful. So anyone out there doesn't have the Smellorama app, <laughs> you should download it because this smell is just gorgeous. I'm just going to go back to this guy here and just turn him on. Um, come back to him in a second. All right. So um, now we just need to bring this together. Now, your, no, your, your gnocchi dough should be um, actually just kind of like this. So look how much extra flour I've got. And it's not a problem with the recipe. It's just that different potatoes have different moisture levels. So for me, that's absolutely perfect. So, and you have a feel of that. I know your hands are clean. Your hands are always clean. But it's kind of a little bit tacky, very soft. And the thing is, if you add lots and lots of flour to this, what you're going to end up with is heavy, dense gnocchi. And we want lovely, light little pillows of air. So that is perfect. So now what I want to do is to cut this into three. How do I know that? Because this has told me. And we have another video that tells us how to actually roll the gnocchi. So guys, if you're thinking of getting a TM6, seriously, just, just go do it. It's amazing. There's so many additional things that really enhance your cooking experience. So I'm going to be doing this. So with my dough, just going to be splitting that into three pieces. I could do this. As a kid, I used to make things out of plasticine and play dough. <laughs> Um, just a little hint, um, what I often find, with, when you're rolling, people don't put enough pressure in the middle. So pressure in the middle and then roll that out because you end up with this big bit in the middle which you don't want. So we want to, oh, we want to roll this out to about half an inch thickness. 
And you notice I haven't got any excess flour because I'm using my thermo mat. If you're working on your bench, you're going to need to put extra flour down. And remember, if you're thinking of upgrading to a TM6 or getting a TM6, this mat comes free as one of the gifts and you also get the amazing bread tin this month. So come on guys, just, just do it and have fun in the kitchen. And for those of you who are younger than Colette, half an inch is about a centimetre and a bit. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, go back to my craft days. If, if Izzy's on, she'll know totally what I mean. I used to run a lot of um, card making classes and patchwork classes and all this kind of stuff, which I loved. I had the most amazing group of customers. But we always worked in inches, always worked in inches. Well, that's because they were all American driven, so yeah, that's America true. still uses the imperial system where us Commonwealth countries mm -hmm. use the metric system. Yeah. So I've got two here, and then the last one, I'm just going to roll this out. In fact, I won't roll this out. I'm going to come back to that in a, in a second. I'm just going to get some. Um, yeah, this in your kitchen. I love this stuff. It's glad go betweens. And what it does, you know, you can put it in between layers of things in the freezer. Nothing sticks to it, but I use it a lot um, just for wrapping things up um, really quite simply and quick. Anyhow, that's go I Love that. Another product I love. And then, okay, I've done that, so I'm now going to, to chop this, but I, I do want to put a little bit of excess flour on here now, because when you chop it, you're going to get exposed to sticky inside of this, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my mix shop, which we use for such a lot, and I'm just going to, I should probably go from this end, shouldn't I, Andy? I'm guesstimating here. So you want about an inch, which is how much I do? Mm. Just under three centimeters. Three centimeters. So, so that that's going to be fine. Just chop these down too. So that's the little knocky, and then what I mean is that now is quite sticky. So just a little bit of flour, not too much. Remember, we don't want dense knocky. So that's going to be great. Just move these to one side. Now. Unless I have people coming around and I'm entertaining, I tend not to shape the gnocchi. I leave them as little pillows. So all I will do is I will, let's get my board here, a little bit of extra flour on here. You, know, you say shape, what do you mean shape? You know, like yeah, you've got to shape them. What, lunar modules, wildebeest shape, what sort of shape? You can have that kind of fun. <laughs> but um, what I tend to do when I'm just doing them for Andrew and I, so I don't, um, is I will just pick them up and I will just squeeze them. That's all I do, pick them up, give them a squeeze and pop them down. But I will show you how to shape them just in case that's kind of what you want to do. So that's going to go down. It looks like it's big knocky. They are big knocky. It was hard actually cutting them. Um, so I just want to get a few on here so I can get these going while I show you about that shaping. So that's probably about, yeah, they'll go a bit, bit big, but that's okay. That will be fine. We'll put those through. Now, so what I'm going to do now, in my other thermomix, what I have got going is, and you could have this warming up, but just to save time, I have put my blade cover in here, and I have basically got boiling water in there. So I've just got it on Varoma temperature, um, so just counting down, so I've got it on aroma temperature, just for a second, the safety features counting down, love all those safety features with the Thermomix, thank you. So it's on high heat now, I'm going to take this cover off, and um, I'm just going to go aroma, and I'm just going to, oh, don't go to speed three, sorry, I just want stir speed, I just want the water gently agitated. And I'm just going to drop this knocky in through the hole. Now you don't need to use your, your blade cover with this because it's going at stir speed, so it's quite gentle. And if you've got your knocky correct, 
it's going to start floating almost immediately and then as it gets ready it's going to float to the top and that's when you know it's done. But let's go back and talk about that shaping. Now I have a knocky board, I'm sure a lot of you have a knocky board, but it's packed away so I can't use it. But it is a very simple process to use. I'll show you kind of on a fork and it's the same process with a fork. So, gosh, they are big knocky actually, Andrew, aren't they? Um, that's probably more the size. Oh, I'll put that in half. These, these are crazy big knocky. Um, we'll go with this one. So what you're going to do is you're going, it's actually hard working here, but um, you're going to go on and you're going to press it down, roll it down, and then you're going to flip it over. So what you end up with is you end up with crevices and you end up with a little pillow. And the idea behind that is that is where all the sauce will actually capture. So let me show you again, just a little bit of flour on my fork. Oh, it's so big. Um, so we'll try with this piece here, which is probably a bit more of a decent size. So on the fork, pressing it down, rolling it, and then as it comes to the end, get your fingers away and then just give it that extra little roll off there. So there you've got your indentation to capture all the sauce and you've got those little rivets. So on your fork, so gosh, it's ginormous. Um, so pressing down, rolling, see how it's rolling across? and then that will just flip over. So that's how you do your rolled gnocchi. Super easy. Wash my hands here. Now, oh, fillings or, or sauces for gnocchi. I'm just going to pop my oven on here. And did you want to pop around here? Um, because we can keep an eye on that gnocchi over there. Um, what I'm actually going to do still figuring out how to use this oven or this hob. I don't use the hob very much. I have a thermomics. <laughs> um, I want this to go to a medium high. So plus 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 set and that should be fine. And in here I've basically got some butter, some olive oil and some sage leaves. That's going to be my sauce for tonight. Super easy. Um, but let's um, have a chat. What are the sauces? What, if you were making gnocchi, what kind of sauces do you love to have? Pop them in the chat. Andrew, what kind of sauce would you love to have with, with gnocchi? You'd probably like a, an oxo gravy. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. What would you, what would you like? Mm, just a, um, a tomato pasta style sauce. That's it, yep, yeah, beautiful. Um, one of your favourites would be the, which is not conventional, but it's just beautiful. And that's to do a real cheesy warning. Well, I was just about to say yeah, cheese cheesy sauce. Cheesy warning sauce is absolutely gorgeous. And um, also a pesto. And um, if you if you do a really smooth pesto, really blitz it down in the thermomix after making it, and add a little bit of extra cream in that to it, it is amazing. Really, really good. Well, this sounds good from Lindsay. A creamy mushroom white wine ragu. That, I like that. I, I like that too. That would be insanely good. Love that. Ooh, creamy mushroom. Yeah, creamy mushroom would be good. So just getting this to heat up, and I'm just going to check in here how that's going. Nice. I love the tomato salami fettuccine, but without the salami. You know, <laughs> that is, who said that? That was Vicky. Vicky, uh, that's a great idea. And then why not just call it a tomato fettuccine? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a gnocchi salami bet uh, uh, oh, yeah, too that would be a great because that uh, thermomix dish is amazing so tasty so many good flavors and just make the sauce and then just pour that over oh i see what you're saying so it's, as you, if you would make the tomato salami yes. fettuccine yeah which i love by the way yeah. But you have just the sauce, you take the salami out. Sorry, yeah. Vicky, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, actually, we've got some salami. And Zayden mentioned that uh, a carbonara, any creamy one? Oh, carbonara. And with bacon. Oh my gosh, so many opportunities, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything tastes better with bacon. Um, yeah, all of those would be good. So tonight I'm just basically doing a nice brown butter sauce. So I just want to bring this to this browning stage. And I love to add a little bit of olive oil in my brown butter because it just helps stop burning so quickly. So that's looking good. Now I reckon that yep, that's, so that's on pretty high. Yeah, I reckon that this here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I wasn't actually timing this, so I just want to How would you so Debbie says she's never had gnocchi before. How would you describe the taste or flavour of gnocchi? 
um, really light, airy um, potato. Imagine like, yeah, potato. It's got potato -y, so, you know, sweet potato flavours. Um, it's absolutely delicious. It's one of those home comfort foods, just absolutely gorgeous. So, I've just done this first, just to save us a bit of time. So I'm just going to pour a fair chunk out of that, and I'm just leaving a tiny bit in there. And now what I'm going to do, can I just show you here, can you see how my gnocchi is all on top now? So that's ready. And I'm going to pop this in here, just to brown off a little bit. It's probably too high. Yeah, no, that's, it is probably, you're right, Andy. So, I'm going to figure out how to work this. I'm not being good with this. That's okay, seven is good. Um, so, we want to, and this will splash and sizzle a little bit. So, just go onto the paper to try and get rid of that. You don't want knocky this big, guys. Giant knocky. Okay. Come on. So they are a little bit delicate, so you do kind of want to keep an eye on them. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of that oil in and just stay there for a second. Look at those things be delicate, the size of feet. No, they are that's the cutting backwards. So all I'm doing is I'm just wanting to brown them a little bit to get them a little bit crispy on that outside. So I'm going to turn this back up now to about eight. And then just give it a few seconds to oh, he's on. So much butter. He's on. I love the addition of the ricotta in this particular one and also the um a little pinch of garlic with that garlic salt. Remember we popped that in there as well. Yum. I don't mind giant knockies. <laughs> so that's browning up quite nicely. Not be too long to go. There we go. Just a moment, guys. And a little salt out. Oh. Hard to find bits and pieces in the house. Two, two the bowl. And then all I'm going to do is I will put this up a bit higher just to speed it up. So you could have been looking for a nice Probably even crisper than that. Can you see the brown crispiness happening there? That's kind of what you're looking for. So just give them a nice turn. And that crispiness really makes a difference with your knocking. Really makes a nice difference. Oh, that's happening now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. So I will post, I've got a great recipe um, which is using vegetables, so it's a kind of a vegetarian version gnocchi, and that creates an amazing sauce. I'll do a recipe card so you can actually try that because it's very yum, and it's great for those meat-free days. All right, that will be fine. And I'm just going to now pour the rest of this in. So let me know what other things would you love to see me do a live on? Are there things that you're a bit unsure about trying in the thermomix? I'd love to know. Because uh, sometimes I sit there and go, oh, what can we do tonight? What can I show people how to do? Um, I had a lot of responses to that Barola cooking class I did the other night. Is the Barola something you'd like to learn more about? Would it be worth doing a live on that maybe? Some of the basic techniques on that? Okay, that's basically fine. Alright. So now I'm just gonna pop this up here. Yum. Use the knocky. And then put that in. So I was asked, are you gonna use sauce in them? But of course you've made the sauce there. 
Yeah, so I'm tonight I'm just keeping it really simple. And I have to say, I just love it simple like this. Um, but you certainly can. There's so many sauces that we've talked about already. I just love that, that burnt butter sauce with sage. And then just to finish that off in the fridge, of course, a little bit more grated parmesan. Or you could do shredded parmesan. Yeah, so there's a few more saying yes, more Varoma. One of the things you might want to do is one of the, the whole fish with all those Asian yes. Would you like to learn sauces. How to, and yeah, thank you, Andrew. Would you like to learn how to cook a whole fish with a beautiful... Uh, one of the, the things that I love to do is a lovely soy-based sauce with the um, crispy shallots and things on them. That's absolutely lovely. Andrew, you want to have a little go? I'm going to put a bit more cheese on there for you. Well, so cut that in half. Huh? Is it hot? Mm, yeah. Oh, these are going to be amazing. I'm going to have this one. <laughs> Happy. Mmm, <laughs> lovely. Absolutely lovely. So, that's little pillows of Noki. Um, have a go, they are absolutely lovely. And, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> He's asked whether, whether people want to see, what you want to see, they said, yes, Andrew doing an OXO live. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky monkey. <laughs> Love got it. A, got a reputation there now, Andrew. Yeah. Um, yeah, so have a go. That's that's a fully guided recipe on Cookie Do with lots of little video tutorials built in. So that could be a great start point for you. Um, and if you've got any questions, as always, let me know. And as always, if you're thinking about grading or getting a Thermomix, remember, I have customers all over Australia. I guess I'm a bit of a virtual um, Thermomix consultant. And... Please don't feel you do not get looked after. Um, I think most of my customers would probably tell you to get you get more looked after. I do lots of things to um, make sure you get the most out of that Thermomix. So thank you so much, everybody. My name is Colette Matriga. Reach out if I can help, and I will see you next time. Say goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye. Also, don't forget the uh, pizza oven. Mm. We have we've been making pizzas every day <laughs> since we've got it. It's just brilliant because you can just do anything and everything. So the other night we had his and hers pizza. So Colette had a boring vegetable pizza and I had mine with um, bacon and um, chicken and cheese and tomatoes, onions, chilies. And mine was beautiful. Is, I said to him, you know, with pizza, less is more on top. I oh, know. <laughs> you should have seen Andrew's pizza. Oh, my goodness. Humongous. But that's the thing. The one pizza base, it doesn't matter what you put on them. Isn't her and amazing for pizza parties? I think that's going to be great when you have people over. Even for kids' parties, you know, if you have, parties. you have like, um, you know, you bring out all the toppings. The kids can make their own pizza. It goes in, and it literally it's cooked in what about 70, 80 seconds. The pizza's done. It's just um, yep. a fabulous little thing to have. Absolutely, we love it. Absolutely love it. And um, I've got lots of you that have already bought it, and I will be getting a newsletter out to you probably tomorrow about gearing that up and getting started with some hints and tips and things. I will see you next time. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you. Mm.